Okay, today on the bench we have an ICOM IC718. Uh, I just recently repaired a Kenwood, and right off the top of my head, don't remember what the model number was on that <laughs> for that for the, the same customer. Um, that one had uh, bad solder joints in the uh, bandpass filter board, uh, so some of the relays weren't uh, weren't energizing, and it was dead shorting the the PA or the final section in the uh, transceiver. Um, he asked me if I could take a look at this one. Now, I can't tell from the note, <laughs> but I almost get the feeling that he just got this radio, because, uh, well, here, I'll just read the note. <laughs> Powers up. The signal strength meter appears to be receiving with movement, but there's no audio. We have audio. <laughs> it will not transmit. After on for a while, smelling an electrical burnt smell from the back of the radio. Seems internally, maybe from a PCB. Uh, thanks for repairing my Kenwood. I appreciate the time and consideration consideration in checking this one. Um, so, not knowing <laughs> what was wrong with this thing, and especially that line about magic smoke smell <laughs> from the back of the radio, I wanted to be really careful powering this thing up. So, first thing I did was, and I've actually, I shot a video on this thing, and I'm, I'm just reshooting it because it was a waste of time. <laughs> but I took the covers off of the radio, inspected everything, everything looked fine. There is a tiny smell, kind of that electronic smell in the radio. Honestly, I think it's just the smell that I smelled was just radio smell. <laughs> it's just, Yeah, it, it didn't s s really smell like anything burned to me. So, um, still not knowing if there was something wrong, because, yeah, I, I take that smoke smell, you know, term very seriously, and I don't want to be causing more damage that might already be done to a radio. So, I hooked it up to a current limited power supply. Now, that's, that's something, if you're going to work on radios, you really should have. The last thing you want to do is hook up something like this that has a dead short somewhere, turn the radio on, and the magic smoke comes out. <laughs> because, especially if the problem only occurs in receive, well, this radio, if you pull the, uh, the service manual for this thing, it's, uh, they give you current, actually, I've used that in the video clip previously. Let me just grab that page out of the recycle bin here. There we go. In transmit, this thing can draw up to 20 amps. In receive standby, 1.3 amps. So this would be receive standby. The radio is turned on, but the volume's turned down the whole way. And then maximum audio, 2 amps in receive. Now maximum audio, they mean basically it's receiving a signal and the volume's cranked up the whole way. So what I wanted to do was... Now the problem with that is if you have the factory power cord attached to the radio, remember, this thing can draw up to 20 amps. So the fuses in the power cord are going to be rated accordingly. If this thing has a short that only happens, let's say, in a receiver circuit that's operating, you know, in that range, you may let the magic smoke out of the radio and those fuses will never blow because it's not a dead short in a power rail you know, directly back in the, uh, the power supply where it's coming into the back of the radio, it may be further into the circuitry, and you can smoke parts. <laughs> so what I wanted to do was was attach it to a, a current limited power supply or a laboratory power supply. And it, that's the one thing I will kind of point out in this video as a handy diagnostics tool. Not that there was anything wrong with this, <laughs> this radio. But when you're trying to figure out problems like that, so he was, he was said there was... The meter was moving just like it is right here, but he had no sound, and it wouldn't transmit. So we had problems in both modes. It's always best to try and troubleshoot the receive mode problem first. Uh, reason I say that is, everything in the receiver circuitry is lower current draw, so less chance of letting out big expensive smoke. So what I wanted to do was, was operate this and make sure that it couldn't draw more than 1.3 amps. So that's where it's handy to have something like that, a power supply that has not only variable voltage, but you can also set with that knob a maximum current 
rating on the power supply. So that's what I did. I set it to 13.8 volts at uh, 1.3 amps maximum current. And what happens in that power supply once, if there is a really big current draw on the radio, once it reaches that 1.3 amps, it's not going to let it draw anymore. And you'll actually see the voltmeter on that power supply will start to drop. You can even take the leads from the power supply and just dead short them together. It doesn't hurt the power supply. And you'll see 1.3 amps on the amp meter, but zero volts on the voltmeter because it's a dead short. So it's really handy, like I say, when you're diagnosing a problem like that. Uh, where you're, you're not sure if there's something that's going to let smoke out, run it on a, on a current limited supply. So that's what I did. I br brought it up on the current limited power supply. Uh, next thing I wanted to do was check to make sure that all of the power supply rails inside the radio were fine, because it has several. It's got uh, but just this distributed 13.8 volt supply, which is reduced a little bit, but 8 volt regulators, there's five a positive five volt rail, a negative five volt rail. I just go to the service manual, found a ribbon cable actually that connects up to the local unit up here, the front display board circuit board, which was really easy to get to, and was just very easily able to check at all those connections. And yeah, all the power supply rails were fine. I didn't smell nothing. Nothing was happening. Uh, the radio was drawing 0.8 amps in standby with the volume down the whole way. So next thing I did was turn the volume up the whole way. Still had no sound. But the current draw didn't increase. <laughs> so it kind of, hmm, what's going on here? And this is where I think the customer, this may be a new radio to him. It's used. It's got battle scars. It's obviously used. But I think this may be a new radio to him. Uh, this is one of those radios where if you don't have the owner's manual, you may have a really hard time using the radio. Modern transceivers like this, a lot of stuff is done through uh, menus, and just the controls are different. Just look, look how many controls there are on this radio. One, two, three. Now, granted, these are double controls as a inner and an outer controls so yeah there was four there and the knob but that's it there are no other knobs on this radio small keypad but this is actually a very high featured radio so it has a lot of features you get to that through menus so once i verified it didn't look like anything was trying to get out escape from the radio i hooked up the mic keyed the mic and i had like i don't know watt and a half two watts on the watt meter over there and it's like yeah, it is something, something's not right here. So I did just that. I downloaded the owner's manual, really quick went through it, and the first thing that I found was, I think someone has had both of these knobs pulled off of the radio. And what they did was this inner knob, or the rear knob, they installed it 180 degrees out. It's keyed, but it can be installed in two directions. As I say, a new radio, kind of a weird uh, RF gain squelch control on this. The RF gain, this rear knob is the RF gain and the squelch at the same time, all the time. That's what's really weird about it. If you turn it, so when you're using this radio, if you want the RF gain up the whole way and you want the squelch turned off, the rear knob here should be centered at the top, the pointer pointing up. It was almost pointing, well it was, it was pointing straight down. <laughs> when it, so I pulled the knobs off, flipped that around, turned it on. The way it was, it was turned full clockwise. Full clockwise is not RF gain the whole way up. Full clockwise is squelch turned the whole way up. You see that little line right there move? Watch that one bar. See it, see it going down there? That's the squelch, okay? When you bring it to the center, that's maximum RF gain, but squelch turned off. And then if you continue to turn it counterclockwise, and you can see there's somebody talking there, see how the bar gets solid and goes up, which is common for amateur radios. As you turn the RF gain down, the S-meter bar will go up. But that's actually the RF gain being turned down. There's the RF gain up the whole way. And then once you get to that center point, and continue on, now you're starting to turn the squelch on. So that's why there wasn't a sound. I centered the control, turned the volume up. Yes. Yes. 
had sound. <laughs> Next thing I did was, why did I have low FR, RF output power? Well, that's because the RF output power was turned down the whole way. So to set the output power on this thing, um, just hit the set button and hold it for about one second, and it brings you into a menu system. And you can go down through, and you can see there's all kinds of stuff you can set in here. But the big one is RF power. Now, I've got it set to 89, which is where it should be for operating on this radio. But, yeah, you can come in here and turn it, and that's where it was. It was on L, low power, at the lowest setting. <laughs> um, I turned that up. Output power was fine. It would do like a 50-watt carrier on AM and does 100, and the radio does like 110, 115 watts on sideband. Uh, it just, and, and the menus, this thing has been, I don't want to, cur I'm try, I try not to curse on videos <laughs> anymore, but it's been finger effed. <laughs> the, the menus in this thing were so screwed up. Oh my god, I can spend a day trying to de-button screw this thing. So I just did a master CPU reset, which on this radio, you push and hold the down button, the up button, when the radio is off, you push those two buttons in, and you power the radio up. That completely resets the radio back to bone stock. And yeah, the radio actually surprisingly started working really well when I did that. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, and there was nothing wrong with it. Um, and just, you know, I'll, I'll, all of these buttons, um, like mode, if you want to switch, if you hit the mode button, you can see we went from lower sideband to CW, RTTY, and AM. You come back to lower sideband, well, how do you get to upper sideband? Push and hold the mode button. When you're in the sideband mode, you push and hold it, and it switches back and forth between upper and lower sideband. Um, just like the filter... Uh, which this doesn't have an optional filter, but then there's lots of filter settings in the menus in this thing. Um, uh, like the noise reduction, okay? Little, little box down here. If you turn the volume up, you can see you can turn that on and off. Yeah, I, I don't know, uh, but now, uh, he was certainly... that is adjustable, but you yeah, push he, again, he, push and hold the noise reduction. And you can turn it from 0 to 15. I think 3 is pretty good. Um, has automatic noise filter. I don't think, no, that one's not programmable. You can't change any settings on that one. Um, but yeah, this, this is a radio, the, the whole, kind of the whole point of this video is you really need to read the owner's manual on how to operate radios like this. Um, they can be rather confusing if you just take one of these things out of the box and plug it in. I mean, controls like volume, RIT, and shift will make sense. But if you don't know where the menus are in this thing, yeah, you will you may never get the radio set up right. And, you know, there's other menus where you have to turn the radio off, push and hold the set button, turn the radio on. That takes you into a whole other set of menus <laughs> that you can... This is where a lot of the filter settings are. Oh, for your digital modes, your CW mode, you know, delay, Vox settings. Yeah, there's just so much stuff in here. And set in settings for in different modes as well. You can change for different modes and uh, receive, transmit, and uh, the different actual modes. So, um, yeah, read the manual. That's about, about all I can say. Now, did it actually have a problem? Yes, I did find a problem. It's not nothing wrong with the radio, though. The microphone's bad. <laughs> you hook the mic up, you push the PTT switch, it switches into transmit, the channel up-down buttons work, the mic cartridge is bad. So this is a powered electrete uh, microphone cartridge inside of this little, one of the little small capsules. It's bad. That's all that's wrong with this radio. I checked the wiring, verified that it does have voltage, because there is voltage present here to supply voltage to that electrete microphone element. Voltage supply to the mic elements uh, fine. Ground is fine. The audio line into the radio is fine. It's just got a bad mic element. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't know if someone sold this radio, and I really need to contact the customer and find out because the curiosity is killing me. Did someone sell this radio possibly? 
that's all that was wrong had a bad mic element you know thinking their radio they had a major problem with the radio they sold the radio this customer got it expecting to get a working radio and that had all these problems which was just that the menu system in this thing had been screwed up so bad and the squelch was turned up the whole way <laughs> so yeah i i don't know but um yeah, so two things, read the manual. The other thing was, as far as troubleshooting, when you're working on a radio that may have magic smoke coming out of it, or you know, reportedly has magic smoke coming out of it, always pull the data sheet. Try and start out in, especially if it has a receive problem, diagnose that first, because the radio is going to be drawing the least amount of current in receive mode. You use a current limited power supply, that way if there is a catastrophic failure in here, um, you'll see, you know, it'll and it'll prevent it from going up in flames because you have limited the current to that maximum. Like in the case of this, when I turned it on, I had it set to 1.3 amps, and the radio actually draws 0.8 amps in receive. That's what it was actually drawing. But um, so yeah, there you go. Sorry, disappointing, not very exciting uh, repair video. There's really no repair, and it was just a matter of reboot the thing to clear up a bunch of screwed up menus and yet needs a mic mic element so <laughs> but if, if 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 it still doesn't read right you may have to take the antenna down and service it for you so there you go icom ic 718